I think in the rock music, it's always a little bit like um, we share also the movement all together, right? So headbang and mm -hmm. so it's just this this wave. It was I like saw it. some people. Uh, I saw some videos from the audiences of people like bobbing their heads to the ending of Rebel. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, you can, why not? Why can't you bob your head? Yeah, it's not going to make definitely. a sound. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm, it's interesting. Welcome to Classical Chats. Thank you for doing this. Yes, yeah, um, thank you for having me. No, I mean, I heard about this project that you're doing and I'm very curious about how you even came up with. So basically what's happening for those who don't know is that I am playing here in London and uh, I will be playing with a cellist who is going to be in Germany with a piano that is like a ghost piano situation because it's yeah. through the Yamaha Desclavier system and I will be very curious how it goes tomorrow. Yeah, me too. There's Actually. been a lot of setup and like logistical <laughs> things to go through. So yeah, tell me about yourself. You want to introduce quickly who you are? Okay, good. My name is Ari. Um, I'm living in Germany. I'm viola player, working in different orchestra in Germany. Hmm. So I'm a freelance I musician. I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, same time, I'm also the musicologist and a PhD, PhD student at uh, Technical University Berlin mm. at a department um, called Audio Communication. And I'm researching about the communication between musician and audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. the project in Japan. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So the first question I always ask when classical mm -hmm. chats is how did you first get into classical music? Oh, okay. Um, I got interested in classical music actually really late. I started the violin when I was six or seven, mm. but I got interest in classical music i think first 14 or 15 years old oh i think i i was really crazy about the scottish traditional music and fiddle music and so that's what you were playing when you were six and seven yeah oh ah. i really wanted to learn that oh wow I but in that. japan um there is no special school for the fiddle music or something oh so you were in japan when you yeah ah, okay and um so so my mom brought to the, me to the normal music school mm -hmm. and I started to play the violin and I was asking them like when I can play the, this fiddle music and so on. How did you know about fiddle music? I did not know of fiddle mu music when I was six. I was in Scotland with my family because uh, my father job there. So mm -hmm. I think we were for four days or five days there mm -hmm. and we had kind of uh, opportunity to to hear the live music there and then i was so amazed by that music and mm -hmm. i said okay i want to do that mm -hmm. so that's why i started to play the violin so and my teacher told me like oh, you have to learn first the basic stuff and then you can choose the piece and yeah. never came actually mm -hmm. <laughs> so i learned the bach and mozart and are you disappointed that you couldn't play fiddle music? Yeah, really much, actually. I'm sorry. So were you, like, forced into <laughs> classical music, but then you eventually grew to like it, or not? Actually, I found it really boring, so... I don't blame you. I fell, a I fell asleep a lot in, yeah. in classical concerts. Not because I was bored, necessarily, but maybe sometimes I was also bored. It was just, like, it's very too, soothing music. Yeah, it's too perfect. It's too mm. elegant, too beautiful, maybe. Mm-hmm. But we need also kind of, I don't know, energy and a little bit exciting music that... He... I mean, I woke up when the symbols, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there are some excitements. But I think when I was young, a lot of times I, I didn't like fall asleep. Even though I, I liked mm -hmm. it and I played it, I can also understand as an audience member mm -hmm. listening, I can be like... Yeah. But that's why you have a lot of relaxing music playlists with classical music. In that's it. true. That's true. So it works for some That's true. That's but... true. So then what was your experience like then with music? With Did you continue with violin? Um, and did then... you actually get to play fiddle? Or did you just then go into classical? From 10 years old, I got interest in rock music, in Japanese rock music, that I started to play a bass. And I wanted to become a rock star. 
that explains your not to uh, like expose your private thing but when i saw your profile picture i was like this does not seem like a traditional classical music researcher <laughs> musicologist <laughs> kind of profile it was like was it dark vader or so like oh yeah, yeah yeah i was like okay there's some rock and roll situation here because <laughs> it's like ari is such an innocent name and then yeah that's true got like a darkness yeah. side yeah yeah <laughs> Okay. Definitely. So every day I wear kind of black stuff all the time and wow. a little bit punky. Like goth? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then went from then... fiddle to rock? I don't know. Wow. Okay, what's next after rock? <laughs> so it was like fiddle, kind of like, were you into, were you introduced to classical yet then before rock or it came after? I, s- I, okay, I played already that time. Vivaldi, Mozart, Concerto, and so on and so on. But you were really, like, no, I want more. Yeah, Panza, I wanted to stop to play the violin. I s- thought, like, rock, rock music is my stuff. Oh, okay. I was getting crazy about it. And um, and then I met, I mean, my my violin teacher gave me a piece called uh, Scottish Fantasy from... Mendelssohn? Bo- no. Bo- Bo- yeah. Ah. And... Um, and that piece changed me. I do not know that piece. Yeah, it's it's. What about it changed you? It was kind of cross over music for me. Yeah, so it's like hmm. t- kind of like um, crossover between my experience in Scotland and traditional music, and also my experience that that I was so amazed by this music, and of course, uh, music education that I was. I saw that it's really boring and so mm. on. And then it's it's just connect this to both. Wait, just to be uh, absolutely clear, Bruch? Like yeah. B-R-U-C-H. Mm-hmm. I played his, I never knew of his music until I played with Louis Lorty, uh, his contributor for two pianos. Mm-hmm. I know, I don't know this piece. I will listen to your piece and you'll listen yeah. to this one. <laughs> um such ah, I did know the this whole piece is like a what what's the instrumentation? He used kind of traditional Scottish melody also, and ah. it's changing. There it's like a symphonic kind of, piece, or yeah, it's fantasy. So there is no fantasy. Yeah, so it's for orchestra, mm-hmm. ah. Viol- solo as uh, solo violin and no orchestra. Yeah. Oh, solo violin. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. And then it drew you back into classical. Not that much but i think i loved that piece so much that i started to listen to it over and over again mm. and mentally mentally i was so ready to play it but physically not uh, you know because you don't have a technique right and i think but this mental mental imagination was so strong that mm-hmm. I pushed me to the next level and mm-hmm. I think it's really important experience for the musician that to have this love to the piece oh yeah and you know that you cannot play still mm-hmm. so you have to practice right it's like a motivation for you to yeah. come on you want to be able to play yourself so yeah and yeah. you can imagine that what how will you want to play Oh, yeah. to move and and then it's just then you have to actually do it not yeah. just imagine and think about it yes yes that was me for majority of my learning okay experience it's always like oh i hear something like mm-hmm. especially when i was very young it's like oh i hear something i know how i want to play it mm-hmm. i don't yet know how to maybe read all the notes or maybe figure out all the fingerings and technicalities okay but yeah. then i'm like oh i really want to learn it and i really want to play it and then I and we listened piece? to it over and over again. Yeah. Which piece was it? Which oh, I, I it happened all the time with okay. all kinds of pieces. Wow. Like, uh, for example, I've been thinking about Chopin Preludes because I was playing it in my concerts. And yeah, I was trying to play it when I was six. But then, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I was not reading the right notes. I was like faking it, but I was like really yeah. into it. Yeah, so my parents feeling. were like thinking I was... <laughs> really able to play but i really wasn't i was like trying yeah or like i would have moments when i was studying uh at juilliard pre-college or maybe even <clears throat> during like my college years where i would suddenly get obsessive with like uh laval's like of no, Ravel, no. or maybe like a list transcendental etude i would hear it and i'm like ah i really want to play it mm-hmm. and then i just 
that passion and just that yeah. obsession with yeah. the music itself just drives me to learn it faster in yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you eventually learn to play. Or, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What was that feeling like? <laughs> a really hard, but somehow I, I was... I, I love that piece that I, my motivation was so strong that I started mm. to practice a lot. So I think that was the, the time that I started to uh. to try to be a violinist or... No more eBay's? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And since then, how did you become a musicologist and... The rest of your musical training. Okay, so and that time I was in Japan, and then when you get kind of level that you can play some pieces, you have kind of basic stuff that you can play. Um, difficult piece, then the teacher would start to speak about the interpretation. There is mm -hmm. also kind of a lot of music rules, mm -hmm. like ah, uh, this is German music, so you should play like that. This is a French music, so right. you shouldn't play like that. Mm -hmm. And they are telling me, like, oh, you have to imagine that in France is blah, 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 or in Germany is blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine. I mean, it's too far away. Mm -hmm. You don't know the culture. Right. right now, we have a kind of a YouTube and internet, and you have a possibility. I, I mean, you have an opportunity to check what's going on in Europe. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that time, we didn't have it. So I said, that okay, I want to go to Germany. So that's why I came to Germany. Mm. And I was not sure if I want to study music in Germany. But the first thing that I thought, like, if you want to understand the music, I really want to see first the culture and maybe I can find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has your experience in Germany influenced the way you interact and play music from Germany? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious because I also think like this. Of course, I had the album Schumann mm -hmm. come out and I tried to learn German. Mm -hmm. and, and I read a lot of like German philosophy or like Goethe, Schiller, mm -hmm. uh, Ita Hoffmann to get into that German culture yeah. and the literature and philosophy. And of course, I read also Schumann's journals and stuff to get into that mm -hmm. German bubble. Yeah. And even listening to how German <clears throat> sounds or how German songs are sung. And yeah. To like really get into it. Yeah. But I didn't end up living in Germany. Okay, but Schumann is quite special one, mm -hmm. I should say. But it's somehow, like, for example, I don't know in English, Auftakt, uh, this, this kick. It's called in German, Auftakt. Auftakt. Mm-hmm, Auftakt. Huh. And uh, we have in German, a ger a German language that has a kind of der, die, das. And this is like in English, uh, the N. I know that from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but yes, continue. And um, so this Auftakt, ding. This is a der, die, das. Hmm. So, die Liebe, the love is die Liebe. Der Vater, father, der Vater. It's this rhythmical stuff that we hear oh. from the Mozart or Haydn or um, Beethoven. It's, it's come from this German language, right? So, I just learned something from you. <laughs> Man, I should have... <laughs> I, have, I wish I knew you before I recorded Schumann, then I would have another ex perspective. Wait, now I'm trying to think what so, piano pieces I know that are like this. There's a lot of in the cello suite also. Uh, Aleman is German um, dance, and I think it's always. It's with the Which one is that from? From the first suite. Bach. Yeah, and then Here. it's the the first beat is strong, right? So di liebe. So the one is really mm. kind of ich verstehe. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> great. Uh, okay, so I'm now trying to. Why I say that? Oh yeah, I love German philosophy and and, and the music and like oh the la la la, and I can't even think of a piano piece that has this quintessential rhythmic thing. Maybe it will come to me at the end. Yeah, definitely. But so continue. <laughs> yeah, for example, that is help if you know the German language. No, mm-hmm. somehow. Um, and then you just ended up staying here. Yeah. Because so I had a little bit problem with the visa because mm. I was under eighteen years old when I came here. Mm. Um, so the German states sent sent me a letter that under eighteen you have to have a school. So if you, if you don't have a school or if you don't uh, find a school, you have to go back to Japan. And that time I really wanted to stay. So I asked a music school in Germany that if I could maybe apply, and then they accepted me and um and then they wanted to push me to the music university mm-hmm. so i said okay i want to stay a bit more so let's try it and i tried it and yeah thankfully i had the opportunity to study in musicals music university so i just stayed there and then i i saw that um string quartet is really cool because I was like a kind of rock girl that wanted to have a band and ah. then to be, become a rock star. So oh. I thought like, yeah, this <laughs> string quartet is kind of rock band. Uh-huh. So I really wanted to to have a string quartet. Hmm. And and once I, we didn't have a viola player because he left. I think he got the job in orchestra or something. So we were searching for the one viola player and... Um, one guy, he's now a solo viola player in uh, Italian orchestra. He had a piercing here. Really cool guy. And I was like, <laughs> I want to play with him. And he was so musical. And he plays so good. That that's changed the whole ensemble sound. Mm-hmm. And I found it so interesting that the viola can do, or viola have kind of strong control. Mm-hmm. And and then I got the interest in viola, so that I changed. Ah. After that experience, I said, I, "This kind of role, mm-hmm. I I love it because I I love to support always. So I I I like the support part always. So I said maybe it's it's uh, fit to me more mm-hmm. than to be violinist. So I just changed to viola." Mm-hmm. And, um, and, but I w- was not sure if it's good or not. So I said that, okay, I want to do the orchestra academy to learn a lot of pieces mm-hmm. and to find out what kind of, um, character the viewer has. And, um, and then I had the opportunity to work in, uh, Opera Frankfurt for one year and I played it there and then I got so crazy about the opera because the opera is more like the more exciting player. yeah <laughs> and it's kind of like you make all together one project yeah there is a stage a stage designer there's a chorus and singer and all. so many yeah so many people involved i don't even know how it's like hundreds of people involved just yeah. to make one opera performance yeah i had an episode with a opera singer manager and yeah he was telling me you know so many aspects go into yeah. one experience of opera yeah yeah so you're not just a musician you know you were also kind of part of this big project and mm-hmm. you were su- supporting that yeah as a one small musician mm-hmm. and i like it so much that i thought like okay i want to become an orchestra player in and i want to work in opera houses Ooh. So I did the audition, and I I think I worked four years in Darmstadt Stadttheater, it's kind of opera house. Mm-hmm. But it was so hard because every day you have a different operas, and the normally opera takes three three hours, I think. Yeah. So one day Mozart, next day Puccini, but you have to practice for a Wagner opera that which takes uh, six, six hours, hours, six hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to a little bit calm down little bit if you want to work but I was not so functional 
functional as a musician that I, it was a little bit too much and I had kind of uh, a burnout. Oh no. Yeah. So I said, it, okay, you have to take it easy and think about what we, what I really want to do in my life. So, and then I said, you know what? I really want to support uh, classical music scene because I knew, I, I know this feeling that the classical music could be also boring. Mm -hmm. So I have kind of every kind of feeling, I mean, emotion experience. So, so maybe I can approach the new stuff for the new audience. So I thought, okay, maybe maybe I can support the classical music scene. And, um, but how? Mm -hmm. And came up with an uh, idea that I want to research as a musicologist about the concert situation, that what's happening there, why we should go to concert and listen to the music. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you just type in a um, computer you and then come out to youtube you know and click on it you're ready to to hear every kind of music and every kind of concerts so we have to find out why is this concert so important and what what is so special about it you know so it, that's this why my topic what's the music scene what's the concert music scene like from your research so far what i didn't like in the musical musicology field that a lot of musical musicologists think that the, the, in, in a classical music concert there is no communication between the audience and musicians. Huh? <laughs> okay. Or something it's not strongly enough compared to rock music or pop music because audience have to be silent and it's and huh. um, musician cannot feel it because audience cannot say anything or shout out or something mm -hmm. so they think that there are not so strong communication between a musician and the audience but i know as a musician that we we feel it mm -hmm. somehow i don't know how do you oh no i mean i was just thinking and i came from a meeting with my managers about my london concert mm -hmm. and shout out to my london audience but like it didn't feel like there was a lack of or a distance at all. It actually felt like we were relaxed and also focused together mm -hmm. with the music. The way I structured my concert was that the entire first half and the entire second half, there's no applause breaks. Mm -hmm. I just play one piece after another and after another. Cool. And I could hear a pin drop, just the silence and the focus I wow. felt. Amazing. In that atmosphere, and I don't know how you would quantify mm -hmm. and even capture that, but that to me was like a communication. When I played, for example, the first kindred scene in the opening, mm -hmm. I could feel the audience was like, that's the, or my managers were like, yeah, they felt like that was the hit song, like, ah. Yeah. But it wasn't like anyone was yelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, maybe it was more of like the breathing I could hear. Mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. a, a bit of movement in the chair but like mm -hmm. i didn't feel like people felt like stiff or mm -hmm. yeah so that's why i i wonder how do you go about proving that it does exist this communication between the audience and the musician okay i i'm not allowed to talk too much about it Ooh. okay is it because it would prime me for tomorrow or something? It, no, because of um, because my PhD project will takes three years. Ah, when right? did you start? Um, one and a half years, I think now. Or so one and a half year, I will have to. And then uh, I will have seven different concerts oh. with a different musician, and I will interview every kind of musician, and I will also analyze your performances with and without the audience mm -hmm. so that how in in what extent you play differently mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of stuff i will i will um see and i my hypothesis is that the audience will i think the impact of the music piece will change also yep 
um, due to this communication. Mm -hmm. I think I know that from from my experience as an audience that if I listen to the Schumann like first, uh, or sometimes I I heard the last year I heard Jan Fogra Shostakovich Cello Concerto mm -hmm. first time. Um, I knew that piece so much because I love actually cello. So I think I heard already a hundred per a hundred times or more. And then I went to the concert to um, to the Shostakovich concerto of uh, Jan Fogra, and then I I thought I, I don't know that piece what? somehow. So I think the impact of the music change also from the audience view, mm -hmm. and not only musician side will change mm -hmm. the feeling of the performance. I mm -hmm. think that the the music will change also through the uh, through the concert setting. So I will also ask the audience, I I create a questionnaire of the concert experience and um also music music experience and um I will see how it's uh, gonna be I look forward to the results of your Please keep me updated because yeah, I'm really definitely, curious. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wow. How did you choose the questions of like part of the audience experience? I immediately, when you set the questionnaire for the concert experience, mm -hmm. I was thinking of like the toilets. How satisfied are you? And like the airports, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Red, orange, yellow, green. So every kind, every category has three items. Mm. So I have, I have kind of like oh, I felt closeness to musician or so on, mm -hmm. and I had to validate it. So we had more items. We did one uh, stream concert, and I we asked also a lot of the participants to answer it, and then we choose the great items, and now we have kind of compact that. I think you need 15 minutes to fill it out and, and to see what's happened. So we have kind of category of the communication between the musician and audience, communication in, within the audience mm -hmm. is also the important part. And um, category of um, um, absorption. Um and then we have kind of category of the music experience that different kind of emotion we have a, a fascination confusion and i think i have now five or six different emotion categories hmm. yeah i wonder what kind of things i don't know if you even reach that stage of like suppose you get this you know data Mm -hmm. What different ways can we change the concert experience in classical music? And also, I'm just fascinated that there's this perception of a lack of communication between musicians and the audience uh -huh. felt by the musicologists. I wonder what caused that perception. Was it like a particular set of data points also? Or is it purely just that, oh yeah, because you have to be quiet? I think uh, because because the audience have to be quiet. That's it. But then what happens to like meditation classes? Like is everybody disconnected because they're quiet and... Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't it kind of the same? I mean, to me, sometimes I feel like when I'm playing, it's like meditating together mm -hmm. with the music. I mean, as somebody who has never meditated, maybe it's nonsense what I'm saying, but it's that feeling of suspension together in mm -hmm. one soundscape or maybe emotional story or something like this. So I think that the problem is that they compare always with a, another kind of music. Mm. So like rock music or pop music. You know what I actually am curious about? I feel like classical music compares itself to mm -hmm. other genres of music. Maybe it's just because I'm studying in classical, but since you you know had your fascination with Scottish fiddle music and rock, mm -hmm. maybe you're not so like ingrained inside classical to have a better perspective and view of things. But 
I don't hear as much the other way around of like pop being compared to classical as much. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. more like, oh, is classical cool enough? Like other genres rather than like the other way around. Does that make sense? So you should write like this whole um, concert experience thing. It's because unlike pop and rock where mm-hmm. audiences can respond to, you cannot respond. Therefore, there is a lack of communication. communication. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's not like from the pop side, they would be comparing something to classical to draw some sort of conclusion that's about fair. the yeah. genre. Ah, that's, that's interesting because um, I think the Beatles said that uh, we they hated it that the audience was screaming because uh, John Lennon, I think, said that nobody hear our our music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was talking to a Beatles fan about this, I think. Yeah. And, then, and yeah, yeah, how Lennon was not super happy about the kind of... He, well, I don't know. I feel like this was kind of an elitist comments that he made about the fans, like not knowing what they're listening to because they're just... Uh-huh yelling or, or overly enthusiastic yeah 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 and then i think and then they made a um, album that it was a little bit more experimental and um a new beatles music that nobody knew that kind of color that what they made and uh because they said that uh, we want to 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 make the music and we want that the audience will listen to it mm-hmm. so i think it's a really yeah interesting point i mean that maybe that that the audience or or, or screaming doesn't mean that it's a great communication right yeah but it depends it's also then that i fear like oh you people are trying to say what audiences should behave like and what they shouldn't behave like and how dare you oh this is so like shut up and don't clap and uh, like watch there are so many rules so i i hesitate to be like yeah it'd be nice if everybody was quiet but no there's like a balance yeah true and then it's like oh what is music you know is what kind of communication do you expect from you know music performance that's true that's is true. it talking like what kind of communication should it be what should a communication look like is this like all part of your PhD questions, or is this outside of that? I think uh, outside. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, like, what kind of communication should it be? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because like in pop, a lot of them talk. Now mm-hmm. I hear sometimes classical concerts. Talk they talk, ask yeah. the mm-hmm. artists to talk. Yeah. Is that better? Did you try it already? I mean, uh, during the pandemic, it's like okay. yeah, you have better. to like. <clears throat> talk somehow and interact and do q and a's like last i played with yan with the shuman mm-hmm. um i think we did yeah we did a q and a before mm-hmm. we played the beethoven at the end yeah I think that's what it was um i always felt awkward and i actually and like in person i <laughs> i don't like to talk right before i play it like this orients me yeah because yeah. it's like different language switching yes. it's not even just like from english to I don't know, German or Chinese or whatever, but Mm -hmm. it's just completely different mechanisms to express myself. Definitely, yeah. So I'm not a huge fan of like talking Mm -hmm. as a form of communication, but I would be very curious, you know, what kind of communication are people looking for in that? For classical music? Yeah, or like both, I think, in like a music concert Mm. experience. Yeah, yeah. I think in the rock music, it's always a little bit sh- like um, we share also the movement all together, right? So headbang and mm-hmm. so it was this this wave. It was I like saw it. some people. Uh, yeah, I saw some videos from the audiences of people like bobbing their heads to the ending of Rebel. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it, you can. Why not? Why can't you bob your head? You know, yeah, it's not going to make definitely. a sound. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm, it's interesting. What's next then? Like, what do you hope? 
will happen for the concert experience and just with your involvement and try to support classical music. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I mean, when I create, created also the questionnaire of the musical experience, um, we choose also, I choose uh, 16 pieces. The classic music is, was everything different from the 16th century to uh, 21 centuries and slow to fasten. And I try to ask a lot of people that who never heard the classical music because I was really curious to see what kind of experience they will have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, participants ask me what kind of music was it. No, no, that music was a uh, Klaus Schumann piano trio, mm -hmm. the, the slow movement. Mm -hmm. This kind of melancholic music. And I was like, wow, they can understand kind of melancholic music in the classical music. And not only in Mozart or Beethoven. Mm -hmm. And or Senakis music was inside. It was uh, really contemporary music. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I, I hope that the audience will not say boring. Mm -hmm. And um, thankfully, they ha they didn't answer as a boring music. So I think we should ch challenge the audience. I, I think that that everybody can understand classical music because in musicology, they think like, ah, oh, if you want to enjoy the classical music you should have a lot of information if you don't have information you cannot feel it but i think that's my uh, that's yeah i disagree with that yeah I, so I what can we do to change that perception it's also part of to give classical's point that's like yes we can give you some educational videos and and mm -hmm. you know little lessons to give you more snippets to just know about the music but ultimately what can we do to change that perception of you have to study and practice a million hours in order to really appreciate classical music? Yeah, that's a big question. Yeah, do you, have any, do you have any hypothesis, guesses? I think the music scene, also the business, we have to, to challenge the audience. We, we I agree. Be, yeah, we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should do a lot of... Uh, crazy program and and yeah. and not only this kind of okay let's do one more time you know yeah because there is so many pieces that we never heard a year in a concert situation like what for example i don't know um i mean i i saw that in um uh, in musicology uh, research that we hear only 15% of, of the Mozart compositions. 15%? Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. So let's, let's stretch out. Let's stop playing Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no offense, Jupiter symphony, but... Or Haydn. I think, it's, I, I think we, what we are hearing, it's, it's actually... It's, it's very small. A, yeah, very small part of the classical music. That also we okay now we are starting to to look at the the female composition. Mm -hmm. So it's good. Yeah, or VIPOC and and just trying to have yeah. a more diverse. Yeah, but still, it's not. Yeah, it's not diverse enough. But then on the other hand, it's like, oh, how do you get audiences into? That's real. The concerts, if it doesn't have some famous names. Okay, maybe, maybe for young people to challenge them. Yeah. They're more open than than us, definitely. I think we should challenge more some, somehow. I think it was also kind of, I mean, this the concert setting that we we're going to try out tomorrow. <laughs> the idea came from, from young so we are talking about it and um, we are talking about the stream concert and we are saying, speaking about it and we said that we should try more and different stuff, new stuff. And that is yawn for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so yawn. <laughs> yeah. 
So this is also the kind of the approach that we shouldn't be so afraid about something, you know, mm -hmm. just try out everything, challenge them. Mm -hmm. So that was the setting that we said that, okay, now the audience can hear both original sounds from the piano and cello. So if Tiffany is in Dresden or in London or Japan or somewhere, it doesn't care, actually. Mm -hmm. But maybe it could be more interesting because we're talking like, because you have kind of distance between you guys, you want to be a little bit closer. You try more. Oh, now you're priming me. Will I <laughs> seek to play in a way that it's like, come on, Jan, <laughs> wait for me. Or am I, I'm going to be later, right? Yeah. So I was like, wait for me, Jan. Stop running. I don't know. Huh. You see, so so Sorry. maybe the performance will be a little, little bit different. Because we're trying harder to make it yeah. so normal. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe for audience, it's a new experience. Yeah. And not, uh, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. What do you mean? For, I mean... It's not only that the setting is not like a because a stream concert, everybody's saying that it's not good enough for the concert. Mm, yeah. But I think. But that, then you've got like the actual instrument. So maybe there. it could be yeah. enough. The I only thing that isn't enough for me as a pianist and as a. Uh, let's say high, high. I don't know if it's high maintenance, but just with high expectations for pianos. Is that I always change the way I play depending on the instrument. Yeah, yeah. And okay. as cool as it is with the system, mm -hmm. it's still missing that spontaneous adjustments that I always make depending yeah. on the piano. Yeah, that's real. And you want to hear also the real acoustics. acoustic. Yep, it's really important. Yeah, yeah. in music and actually, yeah, that's the missing thing. That's true. Forget my legs that will be missing from <laughs> I think. <laughs> the view of the cameras but and also you don't know how loud you're playing compared to his sound so will there be an engineer that's like turning down that you're too loud because <laughs> you can adjust right you can't you can't because we're gonna send your MIDI data to to Dresden Disc mm -hmm. so if you play soft then we'll be softer A little bit control. different from the Sperio, because mm -hmm. I think in the Sperio playback, like you're, you can turn down the volume. Oh, okay. So everything I, is. Um... I don't know about their situation when it's live. Maybe it's not possible, but hmm. I would be curious about the. Yeah. So we tried it. Everything kind of pedal and uh, dynamic um, differences, and it's everything there. So um... with zero point one second differences yes yeah okay i only know that in relation to video editing when sometimes it's 0 0.1 second late or faster than the image mm -hmm. so i'm trying to imagine what that musically is like i'll find out yeah. tomorrow <laughs> well i'm i'm excited to to try this out i don't know how yeah, helpful I, I can be for your project i don't know your phd research but yeah it's an interesting question what are some ways we can challenge the concert experience enhance the concert experience the communication yeah. i can't believe the musicologists are like there's no communication <laughs> who are these people i i want to know i was also really angry at, about it i was like no way so that was the, the kind of uh, the point that i said okay i really want to research about it so there is really no questionnaire about kind of communication between the audience and mu musicians because they thought they think that there there are no communication. So weird. So always the communication is within the audience. This social experience is the uh... topic in the concert experience. But I think that normally I 
interested in the communication with a musician when mm -hmm. I sit down in the audience. Yeah. Well, I would hope so. Otherwise, what are you watching? Like, yeah. T well, even like people react to TVs That's when true. they're watching a movie and get angry. Or maybe it's like a sports game or something and they mm -hmm. feel like they're interacting, communicating. Mm -hmm. Like, how dare you? <laughs> you suck. <laughs> so even there is communication there. So I'm surprised. Okay. Well, any other you know, anecdotes that you would like to share regarding your music journey are you done with rock are you done with fiddle um fiddle music i'm i'm interested still no because i'm playing the viola so um you still play viola yeah how so is that I'm, I'm playing in orchestra normally viola so uh, um, so you're still doing orchestral play mm -hmm. ah yeah but not opera when i have a chance i will but i i for me, it's better to be the freelance musician so mm -hmm. that I can control myself. Like, if it's yeah. too much, then I will say, okay, I have to take the break. So, yeah, it's, it's really good balance for me mm -hmm. because I want to do kind of um, musicology stuff also. And I'm also organizing uh, concert um, or festivals in Berlin. So, mm. for a hobby. So, um, oh, yeah, that's, that's why. Cool. Yeah. It shows that you're really passionate about the music and you want to do more projects and study it yeah, and change definitely. it and... definitely to change the classical music scene is for definitely my I'm like for the young young generation of course and because because I experienced this this stuff that I was really I felt <clears throat> I found it really boring and then now I'm loving it. I'm crazy about it. And I'm going to the concert when I have a time. I go to the concert, different concerts. Mm -hmm. So, and every time I'm really impressed about it, uh, by it. So I I think that, um, I think everybody can, can understand the music and can enjoy the music, mm -hmm. classical music. It doesn't care what kind of education you have or, or information you have. Yeah, or, exactly. You know. I feel like it's it sounds and, and it's you know, they don't need to know who wrote what. It's it's music, mm -hmm. you know, it sounds and yeah. You will just naturally react to the sounds. Yeah. 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 Well, I am rooting for your projects to succeed so you can help change that. Yeah, definitely. Perception. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think Yeah, thank you. I think this is it. Yeah, cool. Yay. Mm -hmm.